So I found this crazy trigonometric simplification on the math stack exchange, and I thought I'd make a video about it. And so our goal is to take this crazy number and make it look nicer. So this is four times the square root of seven over three, cosine of one third, inverse cosine of one over the square root of 28 plus one third. And our first step will be based upon a trigonometric formula for the roots of a cubic polynomial. So if we've got a cubic polynomial x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c, we want to find its roots. So in other words, we want to solve the equation this equals zero. Then one of the roots is equal to two times the square root of negative q times cosine of theta over three minus a over three, where q is three b minus a squared over nine, and r is nine a b minus 27 c minus two a cubed over 54. And finally, cosine theta is equal to r over the square root of negative q cubed. Okay, so this may seem pretty brutal, and to be honest, it is. But let's notice that our number up here looks like it's in this form. If we replace theta with the inverse cosine of this one over the square root of 28. Notice we've got this factor of a third out here that looks like it could play the role of minus a over three. Then we've got this two times the square root of negative q that could probably play the role of this thing right here. Okay, so let's see if it works. Let's see if we can construct a cubic polynomial where this is in fact the root. Well, just looking at this, it'll be easiest to find the coefficient of a, and that's because we need this minus a over three to be equal to this one third. That is if this is the root of a cubic polynomial. But if it is, then minus a over three being equal to one third tells us that a is equal to negative one. So there's our first job done, finding the value of A. Now let's see if we can find the value of capital Q and thus find the value of B. Well, let's notice for our setup, we have two times the square root of minus Q equals four times the square root of seven all over three. So let's start by dividing both sides by two because we have a factor of two on both sides and that'll just ease everything up a little bit. Next, we can square both sides and that'll give us minus Q is equal to two squared times the square root of seven squared, but that's 28 over three squared, but that's nine. But that tells us negative Q is equal to 28 over nine. But let's notice that negative Q is the same thing as A squared minus three B over nine. There I can just switch the order of subtraction and the definition of Q. So this equals 28 over nine. Okay, but let's recall that A was equal to negative one. So A squared is equal to one. Then next up, we can multiply both sides by nine to get rid of that denominator. And we'll see that we get negative three B equals 27. So B is equal to negative nine. So that's good. We've got A and we have B. Now we just have to make sure that we get a consistent system of equations to solve for C. And we'll do that by finding R. Well, I think we can notice that r over the square root of negative q cubed will be equal to one over the square root of 28 just by the roles being played by these guys right here. So let's write that down. We have r over the square root of negative q cubed equals, like I said, one over the square root of 28. But now we can start simplifying and we might as well start right here with the square root of negative Q and negative Q and multiplying those together, we can get the square root of negative Q cubed. So let's see, that'll leave us with R over. So taking the product of these two will give us two times 28, that's 56 times the square root of seven over nine times seven, that is 27. So we have something that looks like that, and then that needs to be equal to one over the square root of 28. 
Okay, so now let's simplify this as much as we can. So we can bring this 27 from the denominator of the denominator to the numerator. And then we can maybe cancel the square root of seven in the denominator with the square root of 28 and turn it into a four. Finally, we can multiply both sides by four and that'll leave us with a one over here and then a multiplication by four in the numerator. But then four divided by 56 is 14. So let's see, that gives us 27 times 14 times r equals one. Or better yet, we can write this as 54 times seven, taking a two from the 14 times r equals one. And that We did that because r has a 54 in the denominator. So canceling that 54 out in the denominator, we'll see that we get seven times nine AB, so that'll be 63 AB minus seven times 27 times C, so that's 189 C, and then minus two A cubed must be equal to one. And now we can use the values of A and B, plug that in there and solve for C. I'll let you guys do that, but what you end up with is C equals one. And so that's good. We got values of A, B, and C, and that gives us some information, and that is this crazy number right here is a root of a cubic polynomial defined with these parts. So that'll be X cubed minus X squared minus nine X plus one equals zero. Okay, so now let's take that fact and continue going with it. So we just finished showing that our crazy number right here is a root of the following cubic polynomial. Now we wanna describe a root of this cubic polynomial a different way. And we'll do this with a couple of substitutions that will lead us towards a primitive root of unity, in other words, a root of one in the complex numbers, and then we'll build that back up to a real number, which will be equal to this. Okay, so we'll start with the following substitution. So it'll be x equals y plus one. So let's notice that means x squared equals y squared plus two y plus one. And furthermore, x cubed will be equal to y cubed plus three y squared plus three y plus one, just from the binomial formula. Okay, so now we wanna to toss all of those up here and see what we get. So we'll have y cubed plus three y squared plus three y plus one minus y squared minus two y minus one minus 9y minus 9 plus 1. So that's what we get after distributing everything out. And then obviously that is equal to 0 because we've just substituted it into this equation. So let's see what simplifies. So we only have a single y cubed term. And then we'll have 3y squared minus y squared. So that'll be plus 2y squared. Then we have 3y minus 9y, so that gives us negative 6y, minus 2y, so that'll be minus 8 times y. And then let's see, for the constant terms, we have plus 1, plus 1, minus 1, minus 9. So in the end, that is negative 8. So now we've produced the following polynomial. And this is actually a little bit more helpful than it might seem. And that's because if you square two and multiply it into two, you get eight. And then if you cube two, you also get eight. So we see a way of doing some sort of substitution and getting all eights as coefficients. And now motivating by getting a lot of equal coefficients will make the following substitution. Y will be equal to two times Z plus one over Z. So for this, you'd want to calculate z squared and z cubed using a similar binomial formula. I'll let you guys do that, but what you end up with is the following equation. So I'll factor some stuff out. You can factor an 8 over z cubed out of this, 
and then you'll end up with z to the sixth plus z to the fifth plus z to the fourth plus z cubed plus z squared plus z plus one equals zero. But now this is a polynomial that has a well-known root and that's the primitive seventh root of unity. So z will be equal to e to the i times two pi over seven. In other words, it is cosine two pi over seven plus i times sine two pi over seven. And you can add multiples of i two pi over seven to this exponent to get all of the other complex roots. But in fact, this is the only complex root we need in order to analyze this crazy number. And you can maybe numerically estimate this crazy number and the number that we'll come up with and see that that is true. Or you can argue it a number of different ways. So I won't do that, but maybe post in the comments how we know we're taking the correct root. Okay, so now let's save some of the substitutions and this final value and we'll finish it off. So far we've shown that our crazy number right here is a root to the following cubic polynomial. Then via two substitutions we were able to rewrite a root of this polynomial in terms of this substituted variable z. So this is cosine 2 pi over 7 plus i sine 2 pi over 7. And then by standard tricks for finding inverses of complex numbers, we know one over z is cos two pi over seven minus i sine two pi over seven. But putting that all together, we see that y will be equal to two times this plus this. But if we add these two things, the imaginary part cancels and we pick up two times this cosine. But combining with this two that's already there, we see this is four times cosine of two pi over seven. Then finally, our original substitution set x equal to y plus one. So in fact, that means x is equal to four times the cosine of two pi over seven plus one. And there we've come up with our identity. So this number right here, which we started with, which is like pretty intricate, involves the cosine and the inverse cosine, along with some other things, is actually equal to four times the cosine of two pi over seven plus one. And that's a good place to stop.